Okay, here we go. I'm gonna show you how to take this saw all the way apart, take the cylinder off, put it back together, trim the limiter caps, uh, advance the timing on it, and uh, kind of show you how to mod the muffler in a very basic way. Here's the basic tools. Um, honestly, I didn't want to take too much time to throw this all together and explain it, so I believe these are all the tools you're gonna to need to do the job, but you might need a few more, who knows. Torx bit, T27. I use my impact driver a lot. You should get one. If you don't have one, get one because it's great for all kinds of stuff. Needle nose pliers. This is just for putting the bar on, the bar nut 13 millimeter, uh, flat punch, a center punch, vice grips, which has ended up being for holding the key for the flywheel, for putting your... Um, coil back on this guy here half inch is for taking the clutch off and this one here 12 millimeter half inch does not work they're a little different 12 millimeter for taking the flywheel nut off hammer and the center punch like i said that's for getting the flywheel off that's for getting the key out this is for getting actually i don't think you need these pliers i was thinking you needed these because you would take out the sir clip in the piston but i guess you're not removing the piston in this situation so scratch that put those back up there uh, uh um piston stop i use a little rope looks works well and i guess with modding the muffler too you might need a uh, phillips head screwdriver first steps we're gonna pull off the starter Now I try to put everything kind of in categories on my bench. You know, I used to bag and tag it, but uh, something like this, I know exactly where all the hardware goes. So, you know, there's that. Flywheel nut comes off. Take these two nuts off, screws off here. Let me put you down. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna, I guess I something else you're gonna need, some sort of, flathead screwdriver any size to get these little clips popped up. Ooh, that was a good one. Take this off, put it to the side. Take the air filter off, put it aside. I guess we'll start with that actually. I got a little out of, ahead of myself there. Take the carb off, these two right here. T27. See? And then just pull it out, it's a little, little tight. And then you kinda gotta finagle with it to get the throttle rod off. Undo this one line, boom, there's your carb. Okay, this will be the next. Since the carb's off, just do it before you forget. Now, to get these limiters out, you're gonna wanna put drywall screws two of them in like so this is when you're going to need your phillips head now i usually like to put this in my vice it's a little easier let's go ahead and move over there which by the way if you're going to do this and you don't have a vice get a vice a vice is a very useful tool to have in your garage i don't know i could not live without one doesn't matter what i'd be doing Push your butterfly down so you don't squish it. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put these in a little bit at a time. And what you're gonna see is this metal surround on it is gonna pop up with it. Which is why you can't do this one at a time because you, you just can't get these out unless this little metal surround comes out too. See, I almost got it. See, now look, there's the entire assembly. Okay, well, I was trying to show you this. So anyways, take these off. Now we're gonna want to reuse all of this stuff. So now you're gonna either wanna take a box knife or just the blade itself. 
and trim these caps off. So you're just kind of going to put it on there and push and they will just come right off. See, there's one, which I'm actually going to get that little chunk at the bottom there. There you go. Limiter caps trimmed. Now I'm gonna put them back in the saw. I don't know if this matters, but I like to do it. I'm gonna line up the slots there with the slot here, like so. There we go. I'll take this little surround thingy call it a frame and there we go now this car is no longer have limiters and while I'm at it I'm gonna go ahead and richen these both up just a smidge and then for starters I'm gonna give it a little more idle okay carb is done Carb is ready to go back on. Let's put these in one spot together. Don't lose any of that. Now, you got these little, so don't forget, like I said, box knife or a blade, you're gonna add that to your tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need to get these little rubber caps out because in there, is the hardware T27s that hold the intake boot on. Now, sometimes you can leave those in there, but and they might stay. I like to side on the air caution and take them out so I don't lose them. Put all this stuff together in the same spot. That's where you know it goes together. That whole area is done. Let's go ahead and pull Jeez. this guy off. Put it aside. Get the spark plug out. And I am rushing myself a little bit here just because I don't want this video to, video to be super long. I'm gonna try to keep it to the point. Um, this usually takes me, I think 10 minutes, maybe 15. I guess let's see how long this video takes. And I forgot to tell you, when you take the starter off, pull this little guy out too so you don't lose it. Put it with your starter. Okay, so now we're going to take off the coil. Got this little electrical connection here. I'm going to take that off. Pull these out. Now, underneath of this is two isolator caps, little rubber caps. And you don't want to lose those because they just kind of fall right off. See, put those together, put the two bolts that go with it. I want to finagle this boot out of here. It's a little tight, but if you work it in the right direction, it's easy to come out. Okay, there's the coil. Now, I am going to take off the clutch, really easy to do. It's got directions right on it. It says off this way. Clutch threads are always backwards threads, by the way, on every saw. That way the clutch doesn't come flying off. Grab a rag, hold the flywheel, or if you got gloves on or something. Sure, you could do this with all hand tools, no power tools, but why? You could also use, well, some of this stuff you could use a regular drill, but regular drills suck compared to impact drivers. Unless you're drilling holes, then you need a regular drill, don't you? That's why it's called the drill.
Okay, now let's take the muffler off. Honestly, should have taken it off first. But it doesn't really matter. Those two there come right off. Now you got three 227s. Now let's talk about the muffler. If you are, in fact, just going to do the basic modificate, modified muffler, just drill a hole right here. You know, about, it doesn't need to be too big. You could even drill a couple. Right about here is where you want them. Might as well take out the screen too, because if you're going to drill a hole all the way through, because there's a baffle on the inside, it actually forces the air to go over here and then through this way and then out here. You just want to drill a hole or two straight through here, take out your screen, won't make a difference, and you're good to go on the muffler. Again, let's put all of these where they go. All that stuff together, there's the muffler. Now take out your worm gear here for the oil pump. Well, we'll try at least. Put all this with the clutch. There's a little washer it goes in there. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. This just pries right up, little cover. Oh, the washer came out with the worm gear, okay. Now the oiler, two more T27s. And then just leave all the, oh, pull this hose off, pull this up, pull that hose off. You can actually just pull that out if you want. See where that goes, just goes up in there. Okay, there's the oiler. I'm gonna put all this stuff together with the clutch because those all go together. All of these things. Same with this, goes by the muffler. Now we're almost done here. Flywheel, and then I can pull the whole engine block out and we're good to go. Flywheel. Got my 12 millimeter for the flywheel. Regular threads on that, left hand. Now, to get this flywheel out, it's really easy. A lot This works on a lot of saws. Put your flat, your center punch right here. Hold it like so. Give it some taps. Usually you can hear the pitch change when you're hitting it. Here's the flywheel. Let's put the nut with it. Don't lose those, they go together. Now, take a T27. You've got three bolts that hold this assembly in. Back here, right there, and right there. these three together. I mean, they're the only black ones you're going to take off, but put them together. And there is what's left. And here is your short block, I guess you could call it. Maybe it's a long block. I don't know. I guess there's no cylinder. Maybe you call it a, well, it'd be a crank case then, wouldn't it? Anyways, from here, I don't do, I don't even check squish. You don't need to. This is a brand new solid, by the way. I have not ran this solid. There's not been fluids in it. Um, put those somewhere handy, all four of them. Now, I do believe they start these before they send them out. Because I have noticed on the last one, there was a little bit of wear. See, right there. Anyways, ditch your base gasket. And then, there we go. Now all you got to do is take the cylinder I sent you, put it back on, do everything in reverse. Um, I will show you actually how to... I am going to take this ring off. Not You're not going to, but 
I'm gonna do some porting on this cylinder, so I need to take that off. So taking out the key to advance it can be a little difficult with these saws. I've even had to heat up some things to get them to come out because they just don't always want to. I don't know why they make them so damn tight. Okay, so this is when you want to take your flat punch. And I'm gonna to try to push it down. Now the last one I had, it was it was very difficult. It did not want to come out. Man, where am I gonna put you? Sometimes I think I need to get like a body mount. Anyways, we'll be right back. Okay, so I did, I just hammered it down gently. It didn't take me long at all. This one pretty much came out. See how I, I put it in like that? And as you get lower, you want to do it gently. You don't want to mess up that seal. And grab some pliers and pull it out. Now on the last one, I, it would not come out. I ended up heating up the backside with a torch at a pretty far distance, right around this area. I did not want to get the seal hot at all. And uh, I heated it up just for a little while and then hammered the key out and it came out pretty easy. Now, for doing the time in advance, you're gonna wanna take this key. First things first, another thing you're gonna need, and you could guess on this and you'll probably be fine, but it's better if you don't. Um, you need a dial indicator, not a dial indicator, uh, whatever measuring tool this is called. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of it right now. Anyways, you're gonna wanna measure the width of this to begin with 1170 there write it down now I'm gonna put it in these vice grips about like so Put it in the vise. Dang it, and here's another thing I didn't tell you you need. You need a flat file, any kind. I like to use the kind I use on my rakers. And then you're just gonna wanna file like so to take some off that key. Try to get it as straight as you can. Now we're shooting for 20 to 30 thousand. I think 25 is pretty good. 30 seems to work too, but. Now I'm gonna measure this width here. Now I got an 0960. So there's 21 thousands. I'm gonna go a touch more and call it a day. That should be around 25. And now to make installing this key back into the saw easier, I'm gonna put it in my vice grips like this. See how I did at that time? I put it uh, flat instead of vertical because I'm going to take the whole width down and I'm going to take my flat file again and I'm going to file it down just a touch. I don't want to make it so loose that it's just going to fall right out of the keyway, but loose enough where I can at least just fit it back in there. They are so tight, it's hard to get them back in. Use my keyway. 
you're gonna wanna put it, if you're looking at it like this, you're gonna wanna put the filed side on the left. Let's see if I filed it enough. Okay, I got it started. I'm gonna take anything I can. And there we go. See, now it's in there pretty snug. I probably can't pull it out by hand, but with a few taps, it'll come right out. Probably gonna take in just a hair more to get it in there and make it easier, but it's fine. So there's that. So now you got your timing advance done. You already drilled your hole in your muffler. You took the limiter caps out of the carb. You got your cylinder. Now you're gonna put it all back together. Personally, uh, when doing, putting these back, uh, again, so, if you want, I could send you just, I mean, you hardly need any Loctite. I use the 515 or 510, both seem to work well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that works. Um, just put a light bead, rub it all around, you know, get the stuff out of there. If you want, I can just squeeze a little bit of this in a bag and send it to you. It won't harden. Um, I mean, you hardly need any. I don't mind doing that at all. You just need to let me know. I could also send you a key. Uh, I'll probably charge you a total of five bucks for it. I'll just order a key also when I do the cylinder and do the timing advance too if you want to do that route. And so yeah, just a thin bead, rub it around real thin, get it out of the insides. And then you don't even need a compressor like this for the ring. It's get it started on the back side away from the pin and then You'll see it'll push the ring forward and then just just take your fingers and just push it down and it'll just pop right on there real easy uh put it so i was going to show you the entire reassembly of this saw but i'm just kind of running out of time here and um it's just the reverse order of everything i just showed, showed you it's really easy stuff to do since i have this filed key when you put the flywheel back on, you see how there's this play? You want to stick your piston stop in here, run it all the way until it locks up. That'd be going counterclockwise because advancing it, you're moving the flywheel counterclockwise. And then you want to grab a rag or something, hold it against that piston stop down here, and then Tighten it up while you're holding it. When you put the coil back on, you need to space it properly. And the way you do that is take a business card, thin piece of cardboard, and you literally just put it between the coil and the magnets. See how it's lined up here? So I would slip this card in there first I'd put the coil on loosely then you'd put the coil back on slide that card in there and that is your gap and that's that's really it I mean you should be able to figure it out it's really not that hard take care